You said this morning that you think the military is fully ready for the U.S. to engage with Hamas, with Hezbollah. How do you think that's being received on the civilian side? Well, it's an interesting question because we know that the order has slowed down. The mandates and the policies come to the military from the civilian leadership and the word has passed down. The question I had for military officers, I was in Tampa a week and a half ago. I can't characterize the discussions, but I was talking to military officers and uh, I said, okay, so the order has come down. Does the information go back up? And I think I've, you know, in the military, so much depends on personal leadership. We have good leadership in the military now. We haven't always had. But I think people like General Petraeus, General McChrystal, Admiral Mullen, who's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, listen carefully to what senior officers and their intelligence officers say, and the word does get up. You can see it in the shaping of American policy. So I'm confident. I think it takes time for, for ideas to be implemented fully into policies, and sometimes it's simply not politically possible. That's a civilian decision. But I'm, I'm confident that there's a kind of awakening in the civilian, among civilian policymakers that things have to change in the region, and that's the result of what they're hearing from the military. And what might that policy look like? We heard John Brennan, Obama's counterterrorism advisor, talking about grappling with engaging with moderate elements in Hezbollah. How would the administration define moderate elements in these movements? Well, listen, I, I saw the John Brennan statement, and uh, this, is, uh, this is code. I look at this as kind of code talk. We're going to engage the moderates in these movements. We never heard about these moderates before, and now all of a sudden we heard about the moderates. Why? What, did they suddenly become moderate? Uh, I, I think this is just a way of saying... We're going to have to we're going to have to redefine for the American people something that sounds palatable. Since we have to talk about Hezbollah, we have to talk to Hezbollah anyway. But we have to talk to Hamas anyway. I know we'll call them moderate. Um, I found this with a man by the name of Nasser Ashraf in Nablus, who I think is a Hamas member and who is certainly a, a, an Islamist. The United States sent a team of uh, officials from the Jerusalem consulate to talk to him. And I approached the State Department. I said, I hear you're talking to Hamas. And he said, well, he's not really Hamas. And I said, well, Nelson Rockefeller wasn't really a Republican, but he was, wasn't he? So uh, I, I think that Hamas and Hezbollah haven't changed, but we have. And to make the change palatable, we just changed the language. Like we did in Iraq, we went and talked to the insurgency. One on Tuesday morning, they were terrorists. We talked to them on Tuesday night. Wednesday morning, they were insurgents. That's how we do it. Do you think Hamas or Hezbollah see benefits to talking to the United States? It's a good. That's the question. Uh, I talked to a, a Hezbollah official in, in Lebanon in March. And I asked him the same question, and he said, "Well." There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of baggage. Maybe now is not the time. We'll have to see. I think talking clears up that baggage, but there's a certain discomfort on the side of Hezbollah about this talk. They've talked to American officials. I brought American officials to Beirut to talk to them, former officials, retired officials. And some of that baggage was cleaned up, but it, it's going to take a long time. There's a lot of history there. With Hamas, when uh, Osama Hamdan of Hamas, um, we were talking about the quartet conditions, and he said, what if, we, what if we say, okay, we'll accept the quartet conditions, we'll disarm, we'll agree to prior agreements, we'll recognize Israel. He said, and then we get to talk, but what's there to talk about if we do all that? Uh, I think Hamas would welcome an approach. I think an approach will be made. I think with Hezbollah, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But neither group can really give up its core principles without losing its reason for existing. Yes, they won't give up their core principles, but their core principles are not really that distasteful to the United States. Neither of them currently are killing Americans. Uh, the people who are killing Americans, the Taliban we're talking to. So, 
they don't have to give up their core principles, and we don't have to give up our core principles. We had talks with the Soviet Union for 40 years during the Cold War, neither side gave up their principles. But we talked. I don't think there's an ex expectation that suddenly people transform themselves simply because they talk. Uh, but I think it's much more possible to reach accommodations once the talk begins. You reported two months ago that General Petraeus had requested adding the West Bank and Gaza to Central Command's area of responsibility, and you reported on some of the political calculations behind that request. Do you think it achieved the goals that the military had in making that request? I think that the, um, the military is saying clearly to the civilian policymakers and elected officials in the United States that what's happening between the Israelis and Palestinians is absolutely key to our status in the region, and that our civilian leadership needs to rethink our relationship with Israel, not to downgrade it, but to make it, um, to balance it out against the other interests that we have in the region. You know, it is, it is, it is odd. Uh, there's a good reason why Israel is in European command. And the rest of the Arab and the Arab world around Israel is in the central command. We don't want to cross those lines. But the West Bank and Gaza is not part of Israel, and so a uh, a, a request that the West Bank and Gaza be part of central command, and an understanding of that and acceptance of that would be a signal, clear signal to Israel that this is occupied, and uh, it's now. Uh, a matter of public questioning in the United States, and I think eventually the request will be accepted quietly.